Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about anxiety, about the stress, the trials, the uh, battles that we fight every day in our minds and in our spirit, um, and what the Bible tells us to do about it. We're going to talk about uh, the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it, and I'm going to use a, a visual analogy. This the title for this is uh, Lesson from the Ammo Shack, and you'll see why in a little bit. But first, let's go ahead and open up in some prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this means of the internet to uh, be able to reach out to people and, and hopefully touch them with your word. Lord God, I pray that you would bless this little study that we will be doing together. Lord, and I pray that it would touch and teach everybody who who watches it lord uh, i pray lord that you would bless my words and, and give me wisdom in doing this video and uh, bless the ears and the eyes of all who watch and listen and i thank you lord in jesus name amen all right so our scripture is from philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 8 and it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things, we'll go on to verse 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Um, the, the part of, of this passage of scripture, um, to me, that that puts the the ball in our court, if you will, is the meditate. Um, obviously, we're supposed to pray, and when we pray, we need to be thankful for God. It doesn't matter what kind of situation you're going through, what the trial is, what the battle is. None of that matters uh, as much as being thankful for the good things. And that goes back to the meditate um, on these things too because <clears throat> no matter what we're dealing with if we meditate on the good if we focus on the good instead of the bad it's gonna help brighten our situation if all we do is look at the bad if all we get do is get distracted in the weeds then it does become very very difficult to get through it um, one thing that I think is interesting if <clears throat> If you study the Eastern tradition of meditation, a lot of what it is, is emptying of your mind, emptying of your thoughts, um, and, and just getting into this, this place mentally and spiritually where uh, you're, you're cleaning everything out, nothing is coming in you know often you see the the monks and stuff like that who have been practicing meditation for years and years or their entire life and they're able to sit there and not be influenced not be affected by anything you know i think of of um the monks in asia who protested and they lit themselves on fire and they were able to sit there and burn to death without screaming or writhing in agony because of that meditative state. <clears throat> I think it's important to note that that is not what Paul is talking about here. This type of meditation is very lively. It's very involved. Um, the, the Greek word that they translate here into meditate is the same word that can be translated into marinade. 
just like you have marinated your steak. If you want a good steak, you don't take things out of it. Um, you marinate it in the good things. And that's what gets you that tenderness, that juicy flavor, right? So if you want a life full of flavor, one that's not tough as shoe leather, you got to marinate it. And what does it tell us to marinate it? tells us to marinate in things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just, are pure, lovely, and of good report. So if you're, we'll use an example from my life. When I was going through my divorce, my ex-wife was leaving me for another man. It was often very tempting and often I did meditate on those bad things and it brought me down it destroyed me and it's only by the grace of God that I'm still here because there were many many times when I was just that close to death because I was meditating focusing marinating on the wrong things <clears throat> once I started digging into God's word and focusing on him, focusing on the joys of life. Uh, remember the last post that, that we did, we talked about joy and happiness and how they're not the same. Joy is a, a um, choice to live in no matter what your circumstances are. And happiness is just an emotional reaction to circumstances. Once I learned that, once I was able to be joyful in all things, I was able to focus, to meditate, to marinate on the good things. The good things in life that God has still given me. Um, one of those things was reloading. It was a way for me to get out of my head, um, to stop focusing on on all the, the crap that I was going through in my life and to focus on something that I truly enjoyed. And I believe that it's a passion that God gave me. And that's why I'm using this passion to try and reach out to others. But <clears throat> when, when you focus on the good, the bad doesn't seem as, as strong. As soon as you, if you have a dark room and you just let a little bit of light in there, you're able to see. it push, A little bit of light will push back a lot of darkness. And that's what I was talking about here. Focus on the good, on the things that are true. And pure and lovely and a good report find those things in your life and focus on them and you're going to have a life full of joy instead of a life full of pain you may not have a whole bunch of happiness but you'll have joy and that's the important thing um <clears throat> You know, I, I talked a little bit about, you know, we're, we're going to do an analogy here with reloading. And um, it is, it's really powerful in a lot of ways, you know, and I, I've talked in previous uh, things that I've written and videos that I've made about how I view guns and ammunition as a strong visual um, example of Bible and scripture and how when you put things together that's how you have the strength and so we're gonna put some things together and we're, we're gonna to, to I'm gonna illustrate how when you have things in the proper amounts they are awesome when you have things in the improper amounts, very, very bad things can happen. So let's get going on that. Okay, so as I've talked about before, um, I, I view scripture as a very good, anal or sorry, I got that backwards. I view ammunition and shooting as a very good um, analogy for scripture. For example, in Ephesians, where Paul gives um, the description of the armor of God, um, he uses the image of 
a Roman infantryman. I have taken that and you can find it on the website. I have uh, rewritten that, retranslated that um, to what a uh, modern warrior looks like, a United States Marine or soldier. Um, and so where you have you know, the, the helmet of salvation, it's the Kevlar of salvation, where you have the, the breastplate of righteousness, it's the flak jacket of righteousness, and instead of a shield, you have your sappy plates, and all that stuff. And and so, the the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, well, we call that the M16 of the spirit. So, if the word of God, your Bible, is... A firearm that means every verse that's in the Bible is a verse that can be fired at the enemy but if you take just a bullet and take it out of the box got just a bullet here now if I take this bullet and I throw it as hard as I can even if I hit you in the eye I mean, it's going to sting, but it's not going to have a lasting impression on you. Besides, maybe that guy's a jerk, right? It's not going to deeply impact your life. But if I take this bullet and I use it in context, if I have the entire cartridge instead of just the bullet, and then I load this cartridge into the system it's supposed to be used in and I pull the trigger now this bullet's got some serious serious power and it's really going to Im impact you <clears throat> so I, I think ammunition just works great because for, for this analogy and this is why if every verse is a bullet you have to use that verse in context. That context is the surrounding scripture of that verse. So, that's where you've got your brass case from. Okay? This brass case is the context in which that bullet is being contained, in which that bullet is getting its power from. In the back of this case, you can see a little silver dot there in the middle. That's the primer. Without a primer, doesn't matter how much gunpowder in here you put in here, what kind of bullet you put on top, how many times you pull the trigger, without a primer, this thing's not going to go off. That primer is the work of Jesus on this earth in this analogy. The, the 33 and a half give or take years that he spent on earth is what should fuel, should spark our fire. Now Jesus told us that he was going to give us a helper. Um, and that helper is the Holy Spirit. And that helper, when it when it first arrived, when, when the Holy Spirit first, first arrives after Jesus, it presents itself as fire. And he says, and I will give you power when the Holy Spirit comes. Okay, so that fire and that power that's our gunpowder. You light it on fire with the primer, the work of Jesus. It ignites the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what pushes the bullet out. Okay. <clears throat> to get back on, on the track for what this message is, where we're talking about anxiety and stress and everything like that, and how we're supposed to meditate on the good things. Reloading is a very precise a very rewarding activity. However, if you reload wrong, it can be devastating. If if you put too little or too much powder in the case, it can have a catastrophic injury. If you use the wrong type of powder in the case, again, catastrophic. I had a shotgun one time when I was, when I was first getting into reloading. I um, watched a couple of YouTube videos and thought I 
had it figured out good enough, and I started messing around with shotgun shells, and I had a, a primer go off, and it lodged the, the projectile up in the barrel, and I wasn't thinking, I jacked another round, I pulled the trigger again, boom, gun blew up in my hands, it ruptured an inch and a half in front of my left hand. If my hand would have been just a little bit further forward, or if that uh, previous shot had gotten stuck just a little bit further back, I, I'd be missing some digits, probably my whole hand. Um, so, this can be dangerous if you're not focusing. And that, that's, that's what we're talking about here, is, is paying attention to the good things. So, right now I'm going to walk you through um reloading a 300 winchester magnum cartridge and uh we're gonna we're gonna talk about it now i know because i've done this um i i've spent the time i've invested the the time and components and money into finding a load that my gun just loves it performs great. I've got a target hanging on my wall right over there. I put three rounds into one hole. It looks like I shot it with a 50 cal. Because I took the time, I focused on the good things, and I got a, an outcome that was highly desirable. And that's what I want for you guys in your lives. I want you to focus on the good things and have an outcome that is highly desirable. I want you to, to live a life that when you die and when you stand before your judge and maker that you hear him say well done good and faithful servant that's a desire for my life for my wife for my kids and for you <clears throat> so because I've done this so much I know that I use 79.6 grains of Rotumbo powder I know I use a CCI large rifle standard primer, and I know that I use a 210 grain Burger VLD seated at a very precise depth. But it took me a long time, and reloading this recipe numerous times before that all clicked. And it's the same thing with you, with with uh, your walk with Christ, with all of us, with our walks with Christ. You can read. You can read this and it doesn't always stick, right? You gotta spend some serious time in this thing for it to really start sticking and start impacting you. <clears throat> and, you know, Paul's talking about focus, meditate on whatever things are true, whatever things are pure, whatever things are just, whatever things are of good rapport, whatever things are righteous. That's what you need to focus on. And that's how you have a good life. He goes on talking about how he knows how to be abased. He knows how to abound. He knows how to do all these things in joy because he has spent the time in communion with Christ. He has spent that time, those times of anxiety, thanking God for the gifts that he still has in his life and asking for healing. So, let's, uh, let's go. We've got... I've got these cases, they're already primed, alright? I've already metered out one load here. So, we take our load of gunpowder. And we, we direct the gunpowder into our case. We use, use a funnel for this. Um, so in your life, you're... funnel is, is open and then it narrows in towards his goal, right? So if you open your life up to the Holy Spirit, he's going to bring himself into you. But first you have to be open. You have to be vulnerable. You have to allow an easy access for him. If you have only a very small portion of your life open to him, you know, if, um, if you say, okay, God, you know, you can, you can have my Sunday. But Monday through Saturday is mine. It's pretty difficult for God to get in there and bless you 
on that one that one out of seven chance okay so open up your whole life to them and all of the power available is going to go in so we've got our funnel we've got our 79 grains of rotumbo right here i know i said 79.6 earlier i'm messing around with my recipe just a little bit so put my powder in put my powder in the case set it in the press and grab a bullet Now, much like how God works in our lives, that that gift that He's going to give you, it takes some pressure. It takes some some reforming of yourself for it to work. So, here too. <clears throat> All right, we've got the Holy Spirit in. Now we're getting now we're getting the power, um, the the vehicle that we're going to influence others through. Now it's getting pressed in. So we press it in. Now we've got a, a round that's ready to go. It's ready for battle. It's ready to do whatever the maker desires to use it for. And that's the same thing I pray with you. When you open yourself up. When you allow the Holy Spirit into your life. When, when you thankfully, no matter what your situation is, when you thankfully allow yourself to be put under pressure, to be reshaped, reformed, and remade according to God's will, come out a new creation you come out as something with some serious power you come out with something useful because I tell you what this empty shell does nothing for me does absolutely nothing for me until I've got the powder and the bullet in there until I'm able to spark it off with that primer so prepare yourself, again, with the work of Jesus on this earth. Spend your time in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, really reading and experiencing the work that Jesus did on this earth and falling in love with him as a person and as a God. And then, open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. Open yourself up to the Holy Spirit while you're doing that. Once you've loved and devoted yourself to Christ, open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. Let Him pour Himself into you. And let God transform you into something powerful and amazing. That, when, when, you, when you focus on the good things, that is the outcome. When you, when you fill yourself with the truth of the Scripture, um, that is what God loves to use to grow you through. And uh, <clears throat> remember verse 9. You know, after, after, after Paul said, whatever things are true and noble and just and pure and lovely and of good rapport, if there's any virtue, folk, uh, meditate, marinate on these things. He goes on to say, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So he was saying, don't just stop with reading the Bible. That's a good thing. It's a great thing. But don't stop there. Find a mentor in your life. Find somebody who's walking a holy and just life with God Someone who is on that righteous path and constantly allowing God to 
address them. Find that person that spiritually you want to be like and follow them. Pick their brain. Um, allow their the lessons that they've learned in their life to be lessons that you learned in your life. That way you can learn those the easy way. You're going to learn plenty of lessons the hard way. But all through the Bible we see the the teacher student relationship being played out and that's because it's important so focus on the good things the true things not the things the world says are good but the things that the bible says are good get yourself a strong mentor allow the holy spirit to fill you and allow god to press you and that my brothers and sisters is what's going to give you a powerful life. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I again, I hope, I pray that this message um, influences someone. Lord God, I pray that as, as long as it's up on the internet, that people will, who need to hear this message will be brought to it, Lord God. And that each and every person who does listen to it, Lord, that they would um, get the message that you are trying to get across through me, Lord God, I pray that um, where I where I faltered, where I didn't make clear sense, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would clarify for them, Lord. And again, I just pray blessings over each and every person who watches this. We love you and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Go and make war.